we've come up now to the most important part of the service. That is the hearing of the word of the Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Amen. This man of God has come to the ranks. He is the, the son and the nephew of two of Pentecost's great preachers. Amen. He served a man for many years under the late Bishop Morris Golder there in Indianapolis. Amen. We knew him first as a great singer and a great choir director. But little did we know what the path was that God was going to lead him along. Amen. And now we found out that he's not a singer who preaches, but he's a preacher who also sings. He is the pastor of the Temple of Praise, pastor and founder of the Temple of Praise in Indianapolis, Indiana. He has served his organization, our organization, the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, in a number of offices, including General Secretary, and now serves as the Bishop, amen, of the great state of Nevada, amen. It is my honor and privilege and pleasure to present to you God's Man of the Hour, amen. I believe that God has a word in his belly for us tonight going to cause us to leave here tonight different than what we came in. Look at somebody and say, you won't leave the same. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand in difference to the word of the servant of the Lord as Bishop Donald Golder comes to bring the word of life. One, two, one, two. Come on, that was for me. Everybody that loves God, give him a great praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Open your mouth, clap your hands. Come on, you can do greater than that. God deserves more. God deserves more. God deserves more. Get everybody on your road. This is a praise and roll. Go sit next to me. You're going to do something. Open your mouth, clap your hands, give it praise. Give it honor. Give it glory. Open your mouth.
that the hand of the Lord came upon him and he said, Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see the wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. That's a miracle right there. Not going to see rain, but the valley is going to be filled with water. A miracle. That ye may drink, both ye and your cattle, and your beasts. And this is but a light thing. Somebody say light thing. In the sight of the Lord, he will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. And ye shall smite every fence city, and every choice city, and shall fail every good tree and stop all wells of water, and mar every good piece of land with stones. And it came to pass, to pass in the morning, when the meat offering was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. I don't know who this is for tonight, but I want to tag this text tonight. The drought is over. Let's look at somebody and say, that dry place in your life is over. Now, now, it might not be you, but tell them, I declare and decree right now that the drought in your finances, the drought in your family, the drought in your life, the drought in your health, sisters must be about our father's business. Uh, I know church has become big business today, but we must be about our father's business. Do I have a witness here? I, I know we're in a pandemic, coming out of a pandemic, and every time it looks like we get ahead, they come up with some new pandemic, some new kind of uh, disease, a germ, or whatever, whatever, but my brothers and sisters, God's word still stands true, and God's not going to ever change. And God is still operating as God, and God is still in control, and God still has the formula for our salvation. Right. Huh, the, the church don't need to be getting cold and, 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 and as close to the world as we possibly can and then still try to be saved. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever more. Amen. And so the will of God for the church in this world is to proclaim the gospel and, and, and 
that's our calling. Churches have been distracted and, and, and in this current, current climate that we're in, some folk left the church during the pandemic and have not returned. Talking about they seeing it online at home. God did not tell us to stay at home and look at church online. He told us to get to the place where we assemble in his name. I'm glad to see all of y'all tonight. Amen. I'm, I'm certainly glad to see Dr. Brazier and the choir coming over from the sister church and all of these pastors. Amen. Y'all need to come to Indiana and show us how to do that. Amen. I just thought I had that in. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I'm glad that some people are bound and determined to come to church and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is our calling. Don't be distracted by the demonic forces of this day. I wish I had somebody in here that could let the devil know I'm with the Lord all the way. My mind is made up. My heart is fixed. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Come what may. I might cry in the midnight hour, but I'm going all the way with the Lord. People might talk about me, but ain't nothing going to run me out of God's church. And somebody in here has fallen into a dry place. Mm, you've lost your joy. You've lost your get up. You've lost your spiritual, uh, your spirituality. Amen. You're in a spiritual drought. Uh, but I come to help you out tonight. Tonight is your coming out day. Or tonight is your coming out night. In fact, won't you tell that neighbor, I'm inviting you to my coming out party because before I leave 35th Street tonight, I'm going to see a well of living water in my life. I wish I had somebody in here that can admit I've gone through some dry season and some dry time. I ain't feel like shouting. I ain't felt like praising. I ain't felt like praying. I ain't felt like reading no Bible. I ain't even felt like hearing nobody else praise God. But I need about 18 believers to holler back say the devil is a liar. I declare that the drought is over tonight. Satan, you tried to steal my joy long enough. And you tried to steal my praise long enough. But I dare somebody wave your hand and say, I'm getting my praise back tonight, tonight, tonight. And so let me slow down here. I'm feeling something up in here. The definition of drought, my brothers and sisters, is a period of dry weather, especially a long one that is interest to crops. Amen. Everything dries up also an esteem shortage. Mm, to put that in spiritual means, it's a dry place. And I'm going to be the first one to be honest with you tonight. I got saved back in 1971 as a young man. I've had some ups and downs, some ins and outs. And I know y'all say the morning and holy and looking good tonight, but some people won't be honest enough to say that I've hit some dry seasons in my saved life. Mm, hallelujah. I hit some seasons where I felt no spiritual water. I hit some seasons where I felt like giving up and, and throwing in the towel and backsliding, if you please. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, uh, there was times I didn't feel like worshiping. Mm, hallelujah. I didn't feel like going to church. In fact, I told myself, as soon as I'm 16, I'm moving out of this sanctified house and I'm going to get out in the world and do my own thing because I'm tired, Bishop uh, Mark, of going to church, paying my Sunday school offering, my missionary offering, singing in the choir. I'm just being fake and phony. I'm tired of this stuff. I'm getting out of this church. Little did I know, Dr. Moore, that the Lord had his hand on me. When I tried to leave, I couldn't go anywhere. He let me go so far and he reeled me right back in. Aren't you glad tonight that God only let you go so far and he reeled you right back in? Y'all ain't happy enough for me because some of y'all tried it just like I tried. I tried to smoke a joint. It didn't work for me. I tried to drink Richard's Wild Iris Rose. It didn't work for me. God had his hand on me. Do I have anybody in here that's glad he got a good grip on me? And when I was trying, he pulled me right back in. I tried to party. He pulled me right back in. I tried to get loaded. He pulled me right back in. Because mama had a prayer that she prayed, save my children. So my brothers and sisters, who's ever going through a dry season, Pastor Brown, I come to prophesy over your life tonight that the drought is about to end and refreshing is coming. Is there anybody in here? No, 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 
mean you've backslid. That don't mean you've left the Lord. Every now and then we need a good old Holy Ghost shower. Y'all don't hit me up in here. A good old refreshing. And so in the text we see three kings who have found themselves in desperate situations. Them and all the armies and the animals. They had went seven days in the wilderness with no water. That is a dilemma, brothers and sisters. Why? Because water is a necessity of life. Water, hallelujah, helps us live. Water is not a luxury. It is necessary to sustain life. Without water, things will dry. Some of y'all got plants outside. You don't water them, they're going to dry. Y'all hearing me? Hearing me? If you don't drink water, you're going to die. That's the reason some people have gone to the doctor. The doctor said, you are right. You just dehydrated. You need to get some liquid in your body. Because if you don't get liquid in your body, you're going to dry up and die. And so the king of Israel starts blaming God for that dilemma. Ain't that something? Every time we go through something in our personal lives, a lot of stuff, Dr. Hollis, that we bought ourselves. We want to point fingers at God. Blame God for our own dilemmas that we got our devilish selves in. Y'all ain't going to be real with me. Don't blame God for your dilemma. Go to God with your dilemma. As Bishop Mark told us already. Bishop Moore already told us. Don't take your problems. Tell your problems you big. Tell your problems how big your God is. Take your dilemmas to God. I'll lift my to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Believe me, God is waiting on you to come to him. You gotta know what to do. When you don't know where to go, you gotta go to God. Take your dilemma to God. Ah, I feel somebody in here got some dilemmas that can't get over, but the Lord came and told me to tell you. He's gonna pick you up and out of that situation and take you higher tonight before you a newfound victory before you leave here you're going to see water in your life if you believe it shout glory shout glory one more time and so my brothers and sisters stop complaining stop murmuring eliminate people out of your circle that's always murmuring and complaining the king the king was a bad influence sometimes the biggest problems we have is wrong associations you got to delete some folk out of your phone and you got to delete some folk out of your life I don't need nobody around me talking negative all the time every time you look up you try to talk positive you encourage it and they come back with something negative I know church folk y'all it's church folk it's church folk I didn't say kingdom minded people I said church folk I didn't say saints I said church folk because there is a difference there's church folk that hang around everything the pastor comes up with. They got to murmur and complain about it. Every vision he brings, why are we doing that? They got to murmur and complain about it. I built a 700 sheet auditorium. I didn't have 700 members from folk murmuring. What we build this for? We don't need this. We ain't got to. Your vision is not like my vision. And if you're not going to follow my vision, find somewhere else to go. I want people that's going to be with my vision. I'll let somebody say stop murmuring complaining and follow the leader follow the vision and so the king was a bad influence murmurers and complainers we all have them in our churches I don't care if we medium or make them we all have murmurers and complainers in our churches and sometimes we need to have a personal deliverance service and deliver ourselves from people with no vision y'all didn't catch me right there deliver yourself from people that's always whining and crying and especially if they talk about the pastor and his first lady and the family deliver yourself from people that don't mean no good I wish I had somebody in here don't y'all sit there and act like you ain't never heard nobody talk about the pastor talk about the deacon talk about what's going on in the church that's the reason a lot of folk don't come to church because you sit up in the beauty shops and the barber shops and run your mouths about the church the devil is a liar every member and every complainer I rebuke Jesus, and let's walk in victory. Yeah. Oh, 
Somebody say personal deliverance. Sometimes wrong associations can kill your joy, kill your vision, kill your passion, and even kill your faith. And so if it hadn't been for King Jehoshaphat, who knew the power of a word from God, they would have all died in the wilderness. Ain't it good to have somebody in your company that knows how to get in God's company? That's good, Bishop. I wouldn't have a church that did not have a leader that did not know how to get in God's presence. I would not have people over auxiliaries that don't know how to get in God's presence. I wouldn't have people over my music ministry that don't know how to get in God's presence. And what I love about what Bishop Moore and Lady Moore has done since they've been in this church, they put the church on a call to prayer. They've had prayer meetings up in here. And many have come to prayer meeting seeking in the face of God, getting a word from the Lord. And Jehoshaphat saw God. He got a word from the Lord. He realized the power of a word. If they had not got a word from the Lord, everybody would have died right there in the wilderness. That's why you need to surround yourself with somebody that hears from God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God would talk to you himself? Y'all ain't hearing me. So many, so many people running around from conference to conference, from convocation to convocation, from convention to convention, trying to get a word from Jake's and trying to get a word from somebody else and, and trying to get a word at this conference and, and trying to get a word at women now on loose. Don't you know God is an omnipresent God? He's everywhere all at the same time and don't have to go nowhere to be everywhere. He still sits yet on the throne and still speaking, still delivering and he'll give you a personal word. Hallelujah. Get your faith out of man and get your faith in God. And so one word, my brothers and sisters, from God can change everything. The text says, and I'm almost through, the word came and said, make this valley full of ditches. Not exactly the word Jehoshaphat wanted to hear. You're right in the middle of a desert dying and here comes a prophet saying, make this valley, this dry place full of ditches. With no water, make this place full of ditches. Good God from glory. The ground had to be hard. The ground had to be old and dry. So then dig ditches. How are we going to do the God? Are you serious? Has anybody in here besides me and some of these pastors and bishops had to ask God every now, are you serious? Lord, I need to check you on that. I need to make sure this is you because this don't make sense. Ah, but how many know every now and then God will tell you to do some things that don't make good common sense? That's the reason you got to walk in faith. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. Maybe I'm the only one that God has spoke to and told me some things that did not really make sense. But we're not dealing with the natural. We're dealing with the supernatural. God adds super to your natural. So get to digging, baby. If God said it, get to digging. Because he's going to make the ground able to be dug. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. Hallelujah. Dry wilderness, a dry place, a desert, a low place if you please. A place that's dry. But the word of God says dead ditches. Ain't that a trip? And I know some of the super saints, that's the reason you gotta be careful, Pastor Brown, who you tell what God has told you. Because people will start analyzing in what God told you. Ah, Joseph is a witness. Don't tell your vision. Don't tell your story. Because sometimes people would jack stuff up and discourage you from doing what God said to do. But even when it didn't make sense, God says, dig, dig, dig. Dig some ditches. Hard work if you please. You may, my brothers and sisters, be in the greatest drought of your life. You might be in a dry season. Everything around you seem to be dried up. But the only way to get through is to keep on moving and, and keep on digging and keep on praying and keep on praising. 
and keep on sowing and keep on coming to church. I heard an old song that said, work on, pray on, your time will go on. I feel my help on the way. Ain't long children, work on, pray on, your time ain't long. Walk together, children. Don't you get weary. Anybody know them old songs? But there's a great camp meeting on the old campground. And I just rose to tell you, I stood up here to tell somebody that God ain't through blessing you. Go on through your dry season. You, you, you got to get a determination deep down in your spirit that God is going to make provision for the vision and get some glory out of it. Have I got a witness up in here tonight? When you do what God says, you create the capacity to receive a greater glory and a greater power and a greater anointing and a greater blessing than you've ever seen in your life. Just point at a neighbor and say, keep on digging. Because God is getting ready to show you exactly what you didn't think made sense. Victory's coming out of that. It's what the devil meant for evil. God's getting ready to turn it around for your good. I know he meant to drive you out of the ministry. But God sent me to tell you, keep on digging. Y'all ain't hearing me. Bishop Moore was on the East Coast. He was pastoring there and he moved down south and founded the Covenant Church down there. And God has blessed him and promoted him to come back up north to Chicago, Illinois, to 35th Street Pentecostal Church. Amen. Because he didn't stop digging ditches. I'm sure back in the day, he was a little discouraged when things weren't moving the way that he thought they should move. I'm speaking from a pastoral perspective now. I'm sure there was times that he had some pillars wet with tears. I'm sure there was times that he didn't feel like praying. I'm not ready yet, Reverend. I'm sure there were times that he had to deal with murmurers and complainers. I know this ain't church anniversary. I'm talking to the 88th convention. There's been 88 years of this church, and I'm sure there were times people said this ain't no work. I'm sure there were times they said Bishop Chief ain't doing it like Pastor Akins did it. And Bishop Chief ain't doing it like the founder Elder Ellis did it. I'm sure there were times they felt like folding up their books and folding up the Bible and say, y'all gonna talk, I'm out of here. But I need somebody to say, the devil is a liar. I'm gonna keep on digging. Y'all ain't hearing me. Ask your neighbor, can you dig it? Y'all don't hear me. Can you dig it? I know the devil's been telling you it's a hopeless situation. I know it's been hard and it's been in a dry place. And I know sometimes you feel like, what's the use? I'm in a desert situation. But I just rose to tell somebody that your drought is over. Y'all didn't hear me. Let me prophesy to you. Your drought is over. I got good news. It's been a setup the whole time. God is getting ready to set you up. He's getting ready to flip your script. He's getting ready to change it and turn it around. I dare somebody say, flip my script, God. Go ahead and flip it. I'm waiting on God. Because God told me through the prophet Jeremiah, I got plans for you. I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. They could not of evil to give you an expected end. Point at a neighbor and say, God has you on his mind. Y'all ain't talking. Look at another neighbor. That was the wrong one. Say, I said, God. I want you to act like a preacher now. Say, God has you on his mind. And I'm so glad that God has me on his mind. For God is not unrighteous to forget his your neighbor of love. And be not weary in well-doing. 
for in due season you're going to reap if you faint not. And the Holy Ghost just told me to tell you to put a praise on it. And due season going to happen in 24 hours. It's going to happen in 24 hours. Put a real praise on it. Quit playing with it. Put a real praise on it. It's going to happen in 24 hours. If you put a real praise on it, just bump me when I'm ready to be bumped. Hallelujah. And so my brothers and sisters, therefore my beloved brethren, be steadfast and unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in in the Lord, God is getting ready to pay you back for every tear. God is getting ready to pay you back for every trial. God is getting ready to pay you back for every pain. I came to prophesy to let everybody know in this very church tonight, you getting ready to tap in to some fresh anointing. You getting ready to see a brand new supply of God's glory. I, I, I think I'm ready to go home now. You getting ready to see a fresh anointing of the power of God. Y'all ain't hearing me. You need to get ready. For God told me he's getting ready to open some doors for you to walk in boldly determination and claiming it in the name of Jesus. The devil got you out in a dry place, a low place. Oh Lord, you thought you were going to die, but I just rose to tell somebody if the devil could have killed you, you'd be dead by now. Y'all ain't talking to me. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and tell him he can huff and puff. But if he could have killed you, you would have been dead by now. But open your mouth and say, I have. I hear the Bible says, I come that you might have life and to have it more abundantly. Look at a neighbor and say, live. I said, tell him live. Because God about to rescue you. You can't quit now. You can't throw in the time now. You can't turn around now. You can't walk away now. God said live. Cause I got a new anointing coming your way. I gotta get out of here y'all. I don't want to hold you long. But you ain't gonna have no breakdown. You're gonna get a breakthrough. Say See yes Lord. I just rolled to tell you that God has been waiting on you to walk in his word right in your wilderness. I dare somebody to tell the thing that's been bothering you. If you're going to hang on me, you're going to praise him. If you're going to hang in my life, you're going to glorify him. If you're going to hang around me, you're going to give God glory. Is there anybody in this house tonight? that knows how to praise him in the midst of a storm in the midst of tests in the midst of trial cause God just told me to tell somebody while you praising him he's gonna turn it sooner or later it's gonna work in your favor I find your neighbor and say your drought is over you need to walk in the new season I see water Cause Jesus said, believe on me, as the scripture has said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I find your neighbor, tell your neighbor, dry your tears, get your joy back, square your shoulders, let the devil know what you meant for evil won't work on me. The assignment of the enemy. Say yeah. Say hello. I gotta get out of here now. But my brothers and my sisters, you're right on the edge of your miracle. I dare y'all to start walking in this place. In every place that the soul 
devil was telling you is over. But tell your neighbor I caught the devil in a lie. The devil said I wasn't gonna make it, but I'm still here. Y'all ain't hearing me. That was the wrong neighbor. Tell another neighbor I caught the devil in another lie. Tell him the devil said my body ain't gonna be healed, but by his stripes I'm healed right now. Y'all ain't talking, y'all ain't talking.
in this thing long enough. And the mountain size has been rough. Take it tonight. I'm coming out. 
this thing. But I gotta keep on digging. Even when it's rough.
rivers, rivers, rivers. Oh, that dry season is over, 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 over. Yeah, 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 yeah.
God says it's over. And God sent me to tell you, your dry place just got full of water.
just about lost your mind in the struggle. But you felt God regulating your mind. You even went to the psychiatrist one minute to put you on some medicine. But right there in that office, you felt God regulating your mind. I don't want you to shout, just wave your hand and tell the Lord thank you for keeping your mind. We gotta go, music is a slow thing now. We gotta get out of here. Thank you. Hasha to Boba Woshita. Everything the devil tried. Confused because he said his 